Hey everyone, before we start, Jordan Feigenbaum and myself created the best how to bench press tutorial video. It's on the Barbell Medicine YouTube channel, so go check that out. Let's check it out. Check it out! How to bench press. In this video, I'm gonna answer the question, are estimated 100 maxes useful? I'll cut right to it, yes they are. And I'm gonna explain to you how I use estimated 100 maxes to guide my training. calculate your estimated 100 max, you would use a formula that takes into account how much weight you lifted and for how many reps. 102, 103, 104. 105 pounds times 104 reps, carry the one, 526 pound estimated max. Sweet. Now, is an estimated 100 max completely accurate? Yeah. Maybe not, it is called an estimated 100 max for a reason. But that doesn't mean that it's not useful information. You know what else is not completely accurate? Counting calories and measuring your body fat percentage. But it's still useful information that you can use to monitor progress. Whether you're trying to get stronger, lose or gain weight, and improve body composition, it's important to follow some sort of metrics. Now, the further away the weight on the bar is from your true 100 max, and the higher the repetitions performed, the less accurate your estimated 100 max will be. And conversely, the closer the weight on the bar is to your actual 100 max, and the lower the repetitions performed, the more accurate your estimated 100 max will be. So a three rep max is more accurate than a 10 rep max when calculating estimations. Now you can find a 100 rep max calculator on numerous websites, but in this video, I'm gonna be referring to the RPE percentage chart shown here because I use RPE in my training and nearly all of my clients use RPE. Knowing your estimated 100 rep max can help you stay on track to make sure that you are progressing. I'm paraphrasing what Jordan Feigenbaum has recently said about monitoring progress. He says, if you squat 300 times five on week one, 315 times three on week two, and 330 times one on week three, are you actually getting any stronger? Or are you actually making progress? As another example, if you squat 300 times five reps with three reps left in the tank on one week, and the next week you squat 305 times five reps at a bone on bone, 10 out of 10 effort, are you actually getting stronger? While yes, you are adding weight to the bar, you're also changing the target. So how does one figure all this out? After all, we're all just trying to push ourselves and get a little bit stronger, so hopefully this video will help you stay on track and get to where you're trying to go. So this is gonna be a lot of numbers, I guess, but if you say, this is too complicated, too much math, you are a stupid. Say it again to my face. If you're trying to lose weight, for example, and you think that counting calories is just too much math, you're being lazy. These numbers can help us keep track of progress. It's not that complicated. So here's what I've been doing recently. When I get my next month of programming, my next four weeks, I'll sit down and write target weights for every lift for the first week based on how training's been going or how last week went. And if I hit all those target weights, great. Then I sit down and I calculate my estimated one rep maxes based off of that week's performance. So if I squatted 400 pounds times five reps at RP8, that would give me an estimated one rep max of 493 pounds because five reps at RP8 is 81% of my max. 400 divided by 0 0.81 equals 493. From here, I'd like to add five to 10 pounds to my squat and deadlift and five pounds to my bench and or press 
each week, depending on where I'm at in my training cycle. So on week three, if I have to do four reps at RP9, I know that that's 86% of my estimated one rep max, which on week three is 505. So my target weight for the day is 435 times four at RP9. So rather than just saying, eh, I don't really know what I'm gonna do, I did 400 times five at RP8 a couple of weeks ago, so I guess I'll just shoot for 405 times four at nine. I'm adding five pounds, right? Yes, but it's one rep less and one RPE more. So you can see how it's kind of easy to get lost and it's important to stay on track. Hold up, Alan, that is not RPE. You're literally just writing numbers down. They are just my target weights to give me an idea of what I should shoot for on this particular day. Sometimes I'm spot on with target weights, sometimes I'm a little under, and sometimes I'm over. It's not the end of the world either way. If you walk into the gym and squat the empty barbell for a couple of reps, and then say to yourself, oh, eh, psh, just not feeling it today. I think I'm gonna hit it hard next week. Nah, probably the week after that. You are not using RPE correctly. Now some people might argue that, Alan, it is unrealistic for you to think that you can add five pounds to your estimated winner at max each and every week. And I would disagree. You need to realize that a prescribed RPE is not limited to one exact number, one pound or kilo. For example, if I squatted 495 pounds for one rep at RP8, what do you think would have happened if instead I decided to squat 500 for one rep? Would that have been RP9? What about 505 for one rep? RP10? Let's go the other way and say I did five pounds less at 490. Would that have been RP7? Chances are no. I'd be willing to bet that 490 to 510 all would have been about an RP8. There is a range that you can work with. That's why I think it's reasonable to say you could potentially add five pounds to your estimated winner max from week to week. In fact, sometimes I'll do 495 for one rep and I'll rate it at RP8. But I'll still do one more jump up to, let's say 520 for one rep and I'll rate it as an RP8. You'll learn this the more you use RPE. So I don't think there's anything wrong with saying, realistically, I wanna squat 500 pounds at the end of this training cycle, or I want my estimated one rep max to be 500 pounds at the end of this block. It's okay to set goals so long as you stay within your RPE bumpers. That's it everyone, using this RPE percentage chart and calculating estimated one rep maxes to help me select my target weights each day has helped keep me focused during this training cycle and I hope it can do the same for you. There is nothing wrong with holding yourself accountable and setting goals, even on an RPE based program. You are not a candle in the wind. You lift your life like a candle in the wind. And most importantly, always remember. Trend on!